In this passage, Jesus not only teaches us how to pray, but also reveals the heart of our relationship with God. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today we gather to reflect on a profound and essential passage from the Gospel of Matthew, from chapter 6, verses 7 to 15. In this passage, Jesus not only teaches us how to pray, but also reveals the heart of our relationship with God. Jesus begins by instructing us, And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of the many words. Here, Jesus addresses a common misconception that the effectiveness of our prayers is determined by their length or complexity. Instead, he calls us to simplicity and sincerity. Prayer is not about impressing God with our words, but about opening our hearts to him in genuine conversation. Jesus then goes on to teach us how to pray through the perfect prayer, the Our Father. Let's look at this prayer line by line. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. In these opening words, Jesus invites us to recognize God as our Father. This is a radical and intimate way to address the creator of the universe. It emphasizes our relationship with God as one of children to a loving parent. The words hallowed be your name, calls us to honor and revere God's holiness. It reminds us that prayer begins and flows from the adoration of God as our creator and sustainer. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. These lines express a profound desire for God's reign to be established here on earth. We long for a world where God's will is done perfectly, just as it is in heaven. This petition challenges us to align our lives with God's purposes and to work towards the realization of His kingdom in all of our daily actions. Give us today our daily bread. With this request, we acknowledge our dependence on God for all our needs. Daily bread symbolizes both our physical sustenance and our spiritual nourishment, especially the Eucharist. By asking God to provide for us each day, we express trust in His providence and reject anxiety about the future. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Forgiveness is at the heart of the Christian life. In asking God to forgive our debts, we admit our need for His mercy and grace. At the same time, we commit to extending forgiveness to those who have wronged us. Jesus emphasizes this principle in verses 14 and 15, underscoring that our willingness to forgive others is directly linked to God's forgiveness of us, and it is an extension of His own mercy. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. This final petition acknowledges our human frailty and the reality of spiritual warfare. We ask God to protect us from the snares of temptation and to deliver us from the evil one. This prayer reminds us of our need for God's strength and guidance in overcoming all the challenges and trials we face. We are not on our own. My dear brothers and sisters, as we meditate on the Lord's Prayer, let us remember that it is not merely a set of words to be recited, but a guide for our entire prayer life. It calls us to approach God with humility, trust and reverence. It challenges us to seek His kingdom, rely on His provision, practice forgiveness and depend on His protection. May this prayer shape our hearts and lives, drawing us closer to God and transforming us into the instruments of His grace and peace in the world. Amen.